Hi YouTube and welcome to the channel. Now in today's video we are going to be looking at the Flyhal FC610 here and in particular we're going to be fitting one of these Surpass Hobby uh, brushless motor kits that uh, Banggood have sent me for review. So a big thumbs up to Banggood for sponsoring this video. Right then, before we begin fitting the kit, let's have a quick look in the box, see what we get. Uh, we get one uh, three wire replacement servo. It comes with a nice alloy servo horn and several other bits and pieces, just like spares, just in case uh, there's obviously different types of servo horns you can use on it. Uh, we get one Surpass Hobby 60 amp ESC, where, with the, which is fan cooled. So that should be quite cool. And we get a, what is it, a 3650, 4500 kV uh, brushless motor. And I believe uh, we also get uh, a little motor radiator. And I believe you can fit, uh, you can fit a cooling fan to these. Um, so we might do that in a future video. So that's basically what's in the kit. So before we start fitting it, uh, what we need to find out is how fast this thing is from standard. So that's precisely what we're gonna do now. Right then outside now, we've got the Speedo strapped to our FC610. Uh, let's see what the stock top speed is. Right then, for our stock FC610, uh, the little speedo says 16.8 miles an hour. So we'll, we'll call that 17. Uh, let's get back home, stick the brushless motor in it, take it back out and see what we get then. Right then, the first job I think is going to be to remove the old motor. And to do this, we have to remove this cover at the back. And I think we have to remove the shock tower, the rear shock towers, shocks, so we can get access to the screws that hold this cover on, the central cover on. Um, now, my ESC has actually come loose in this, um, so it shouldn't be too much hassle to get the original out. I am tween whether to leave, actually leave the servo, the three wire servo that's, that comes with the truck in place because there's actually nothing wrong with it. Mind you, there's nothing wrong with the motor and the ESC, but I'm replacing that. Um, so I'll decide in a bit whether I want to uh, replace it with that new servo that they've given me. Anyway, I'll decide that in a bit, so uh, less talking, more action. Okay, the motor's off and I've run into my first potential problem. That being that the shaft on the 550 uh, is longer, or the output shaft, I should say, on the 550 motor is longer than the brushless motor that they've sent me. And also the pinion on the brushed motor hasn't got a little grub screw on at all. It's just literally pressed on and it's very short. I'm not 100% sure whether the height of the pinion on this motor is going to be sufficient when it's put on the shaft of the brushless motor to actually reach the gears. Now, as luck would have it, although I'm not 100% sure at the moment, I have got a Zingli Hong um, output pinion which is exactly the same amount of teeth and the same pitch, but is a lot thicker. So I'm hoping uh, that this one will literally go on the brushless shaft and make it long enough so it will reach the reduction gear on the uh, fly hull. So fingers crossed. Anyway, let's try it. Right, that's a stroke of luck then. It just about slides on far enough onto the motor shaft that I think it's going to be okay. So obviously this one has got a, a grub screw to retain it as well, so there's no uh, trying to force it on and off. Um, now it's also made out of brass, so I don't know how long it's going to last uh, interacting with this steel gear. Um, but it does seem as though the mesh is good, and by some stroke of luck, it's the same amount of teeth. This is actually off a Zingli Hong Q901, so I'll put a link in the description anyway. Um, so if anyone's struggling for a pinion for one of these fly howls, uh, you could probably get away with using one of these. Anyway, um, I will lock tight the grub screw and the pinion onto the shaft, and we'll carry on. So this is where we're at. I've reinstalled the motor, put the back end back together. I'm just trying to decide where I'm going to put the ESC. But as luck would have it, obviously this is a truck body. So we've got a great big bulge here that doesn't obviously contain anything. So I think, this is only sort of temporary by the way. Uh, I think I'm going to have the ESC on this brace here. Um, I think that's going to be the best place for it. It doesn't fit, it's too large. It doesn't fit where the old uh, ESC was. 
and if I have it up here it doesn't interfere with any of my battery choices just got to keep these wires out of the way somewhere um, now then for a transmitter and receiver we are going to be using uh, my good old uh, fly sky here so what I'm going to do is bind obviously this takes up to 10 RC's on the one controller obviously what I'm going to do is just bind another receiver to it so we're going to use the fly sky uh, as our transmitter so I'm th I think for the time being I think I'm going to use the original servo because I'm quite happy with it it's not it's not slow by any stretch of the imagination and I'll save the uh, the surpass hobby one uh, just in case and for another video if, we, if required so I'm going to go ahead and bind uh, our receiver and transmitter together connect it all up and obviously see if it works and then finalize all the positions right then this is where we're at and I do apologize I did get a little bit further than I anticipated uh, just got a little bit carried away putting stuff on uh, I just want to get it done really and try it um, so our ESC is sat on top of this frame brace here I've just used a couple of extra tie wraps as well as some carpet tape just to stick it down I did put a little notch in the plastic on top so the tie wraps sort of sit in a V so it's got something to grip it does seem quite stable uh, uh on off switch is tie up to the front of this frame uh, sorry this uh, body post here so we can just quickly turn it on and off um it's i tried it in various different locations it just it was a little bit fiddly down here and uh, to be honest it wouldn't stick with the the uh, carpet tape so and there's no holes in it to screw it to anything so i've just literally just bunged it up there sorry. the receiver is actually located down here uh, where the old uh, ESC receiver was um, and obviously the batteries mount the same way as they did before I'm not going to go into detail on how I bound our FlySky uh, transmitter to the receiver because there's absolutely thousands of videos out there on how you do this um, but I will as soon as you're here just quickly turn it on and then so I'm losing the light here in the UK unfortunately so there's no time today to go and try it uh, but we'll turn him on this fan is very noisy by the way uh, got our steering. I have used the stock steering uh, servo because uh, I don't think it's that bad to be fair and uh, we've got power that does seem a little bit quicker than uh, the original uh, so I'm quite quietly confident that it should do more than sort of 16.4 mile an hour but anyway i put the wheels back on put the body back on and then for tomorrow when it's light i shall go and try it right then outside with the brushless kit fitted uh, i can't use my usual straight road because uh, i think there's a bit of football going on and uh, there's a load of parked cars there so unfortunately uh, i'm gonna have to use this sort of semi curved stretch so hopefully uh, be able to get a good run out of it uh, but uh, zeroed the speedo anyway so let's try it right the first couple of runs 30.7 miles an hour uh, we've got our 10 mile an hour extra top speed no problem at all uh, i'm going to try another couple of runs it's very slippy here and the curved road isn't isn't helping at all i mean there's a bit of standing water at the top which is making it very difficult when you're sort of rounding that curve uh, but i'm going to give it another couple of goes and uh, see if we can go just a touch quicker I wish I'd have got that on camera just to tree that hard, it's not one of the stickers off. Right then, I think I'm going to call it a day, the battery's getting a little bit tired. I can't get it to go any quicker than 30.7. There's, there's too much curve on this road and it's just far too slippy for these tyres. Uh, just, just virtually no grip. Um, on the plus side, uh, the motor stays nice and cool. It's not got hot at all, so it's not really stressed out. And the ESC has remained quite cool as well. So. Uh, thumbs up for the surpass hobby kit right then back inside what did we think of our surpass hobby uh, brushless kit 
Um, well, to be honest, if you are after a bit more speed, then you really can't go wrong. But there aren't really any downsides to it. Um, we've gone from 16.8 miles an hour to 30.4 miles an hour, which is basically 14 mile an hour uh, difference. You know, I'm sure as well, if the road had been straight and dry, if I'd have used the other road, I, I reckon I could have got about 32 miles an hour out of it. It was just that bit of a curve and the fact that it was damp. Uh, and these tyres don't help either, they're not uh, they're not overly brilliant. And I'm sure I could have got about 32 miles an hour out of it. I mean, it is only running 2S, and this thing uh, will take uh, a 3S battery. So uh, you've got an order of magnitude greater again if you put 3S in it. Um, if you're after a bit more speed, there really isn't any downside, to be honest. The only downside I can think of is that it's turned quite a placid, uh, lazy handling sort of RC into it's quite skittish now especially on the power but but like i said to you it was quite damp and uh, slippery out there to be fair to it i mean the kit itself is all plug and play so if you're a novice at upgrading rcs i mean i'm no expert myself but if you're a novice uh, then this is fa a fairly straightforward uh, thing to do to your rc Right then, price. This kit costs £41 or $53, which I don't think for the performance uh, increase you get is too bad at all. Obviously, we're not talking... Obviously, I've not included the transmitter and the receiver in there uh, because I already already had that already. So you would have to factor that in if you didn't already have something that you could use. Uh, but for 41 quid, $53, almost doubling the top speed. Um, I don't think you get, you get any more bang for your buck for that. And before I forget, I did purchase one of these little Surpass Hobby programming cards as well. And I think if you're going to start upgrading or start fitting brushless kits, I think this is a well well worth a purchase, to be honest. Uh, as ever, there will be links for all the items that I've used today. Uh, they will all be in the description, so if you want to uh, go and have a look at them, you can. As ever, a massive thank you to Banggood for supplying the kit for review. And as ever, if you found this video of some use and interest, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you're feeling that way inclined, hit that subscribe button for more similar future content. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you again soon.